Memblaze? I've, I've never heard of Memblaze. Memblaze? What kind of name is Memblaze? Sounds like it would be something from the He-Man cartoon, right? Oh, that's Mumra. No, no, no. The P-Blaze 7A40 is actually a legit impressive U.2 SSD, and Memblaze has been around for 13 years. They just weren't on my radar before. And so I gotta test this because they sent me this SSD and I was surprised by the results. It actually goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Kyoxia CM7 in a lot of tests, even after I've treated this thing like an anvil and uh, filled it up and erased it about 12 times. Let's take a closer look. So this is a 3D TLC 7.68 terabyte storage device, U.2. It's designed for the enterprise and it's designed for enterprise workloads. And Memblaze has done a lot of tuning on this platform in order to offer you sort of the best of all worlds in terms of AI workloads and S3 object storage and everything else. I used it with ext4. I did most of my testing with ext4. I created a forum thread that went through a lot of the performance and other stuff that I did on this drive. In a couple of months, I'm hoping to relaunch the Level 1 Text website, which is going to collect a lot of the stuff that I do for these videos to make it a little easier to find these videos and live streams and all the cool stuff, because sometimes we just hook these up and play with them in live streams and then, you know, just see where it takes us. And then, yeah, I need to, I need to capture all that and build a database and do testing and that sort of thing. So just using FIO for just raw performance testing, IOU ring, yeah, this lives up to the claims. I mean, 55 microseconds for read and five microseconds for write is what Memblaze promises. And largely I was able to achieve that on a raw device. Now, when you factor in file system overhead and FIO and all of the other stuff that you get from just a default storage configuration, real world, it's gonna be higher than that. And so I just configured some scenarios that are based on uh, stuff that I've encountered in the real world in terms of sequential writing in 128K at a time, and of course, random 4K and so on and so forth. If you're not clued into the SSD diagnostic world, pretty much everybody operates on 4K sector testing, but anymore with SSD capacities going up, there is a temptation to make the uh, raw sectors on the drive uh, larger than 4K, like 16K, 32K at a time, <laughs> foreshadowing. This is a 4K, native drive, 3D TLC, like I say. It is, uh, has an endurance of one drive right per day, five-year warranty. So Memblaze believes in their product and sort of will stand by their product. And Five-year warranty, one drive right per day is pretty significant for 3D TLC. 3D TLC also has pretty strong performance implications. Full tilt, running full tilt, this drive can achieve greater than 14 gigabytes per second read and greater than 10 gigabytes per second write. I actually found the performance of this drive even after doing some, some conditioning of the drive, meaning that you fill it and erase it a bunch of times and get it, give it some time to get into a steady state, that it actually performed a little better than what Memblaze claims. Part of that might be under promise and over deliver, but part of it is also the way that manned media wears. Once you've got two or three years of drive writes under your belt, the media does actually tend to get a little slower, or more precisely, the thing that reads from the media has a little harder time reading from the media, and so things can slow down a little bit. This is not the kind of thing that you encounter in consumer land, this is purely an enterprise thing. Um, and so I think that maybe in the beginning of the drive lifetime, it is delivering way over spec. And then as it ages, it'll probably be a little under spec, but I'm gonna have to do a couple petabytes of writing to this drive in order to verify that. Uh, we did that with uh, another drive that we reviewed previously, an 800 gig drive, and we, we wrote several petabytes of information to that, and it held up really well, held up surprisingly well. I, based on what I've seen from this drive so far, I'm not anticipating anything untoward here. The drive has actually done very, very well for different kinds of workloads. We also tested an AI workload, which is just how long it takes to load a model from this thing, because if you're buying this drive, PCIe Gen 5, and you want it to go fast, then reading a large language model that is, you know, in the hundreds of gigabytes size from a, a device like this is sort of your best case scenario. Like this thing should be able to achieve 14, 15 gigabytes per second. And it did. It went toe to toe with uh, the Kyoxia CM7, which is one of our best SSDs for AI workloads that we've tested. 
and this also holds its own. When we're talking about AI models that take a minute or two to load, the difference between the two drives is mere seconds. So I think it's within mar margin of error. And it's also a lot of fun to test things like that because you also have to flush all the memory in the system. I'm using AMD Epic in, on the AM5 platform with a PCIe Gen 5 dual MCIO connector to do all of our testing. And it has 64 gigabytes of DDR5. So on a true, you know, 12 memory channel Epic platform, uh, the calculus would probably be a little different, but th this drive performs as well as it does in this setup is also kind of revealing, I think, in a good way. Uh, the other thing that surprised me about this drive is that this setup makes it really easy to test the actual power usage going into the drive because of the breakout cable. Uh, this drive peaks at 22 watts most of the time, and most of the, the real world scenarios is like 18, 19 watts for writing. Reading was more on the line of like 12 to 13 watts, which is pretty good. I mean, it's an eight terabyte drive. You can get these in higher capacities, 16 or 32 terabytes. That'll probably change the calculus a little bit, but the eight terabyte drive is coming well under their specification of 25 watts or less than 25 watts. It is indeed less than 25 watts at peak, at worst case scenario. And most of the time, you're upwards of 10 watts under that 25 watt peak. So imagine that you've got a 2U chassis with 24 bays at the front, 24 of those crammed in there. Having each drive, even in right heavy scenarios, not really producing, not really consuming that much energy, not really producing that much heat. That is good news for the data center and that is good news for high density configurations. I also really like the uh, heat sink design uh, of, the, of the actual SSD. It is, it is very effective. It does get warm to the touch if you leave it without any airflow over it whatsoever. It has some open holes on the front. Amenblaze did, I think, not neglect the physical design of their uh, their U.2. This is, of course, available in other form factors if you don't prefer U.2, but Memblaze, I think, is about focusing on some specific products that are part of the flash storage market and then really trying to execute well on those specific devices. And volume sales of U.2, when I asked about it, is really what they said that they go for. And that kind of makes sense after testing this product. It's sort of the, the a good all-rounder. We also tested database workloads. It did fine there. Uh, and we also tested S3 object style storage. So S3 object replacement, you can do this. It's getting to the point where you can do this without even having a file system. Everything just operates natively. And generally, that's operating at 128 kilobytes at a time. Kind of like uh, the defaults on a ZFS volume. Everything is operating at 128 kilobytes at a time. And that's also where some of that temptation to change the block size on Flash Media comes from because it is not great for reads and writes that are less than 128K doesn't help your performance there, but it simplifies some of the internal design and simplifies some of the overhead and can improve latency because a lot of the focus on storage now is latency oriented just as much as throughput. So object S3 style object storage, this is a particularly good drive for workloads like that from our testing. And you can follow more about that on the level one forums. So overall for the first drive that I've tested from Memblaze, it's a pretty impressive product. I'm going to leave this in a system running continuously for the next couple months and years. You can probably check in with me on the level one forums if you're wondering how it's going or what the current state is. I may also try to pick up some more of these drives. If you have any, you know, prior, this is, you know, the 7A40, it's the latest and greatest. Uh, if you have any other older Memblaze products or you have experience with this product in the enterprise that you'd like to share, definitely do that in the level one forums. It'll help other people like you and other sysadmins and anybody else looking to do deployments. Uh, if you have a specific workload that you wanna run, especially if it's a Linux workload and it's, especially if it's something that I can run from a script, let me know because, hey, I can probably do that. I can probably do that on a different platform. I'm happy to do that. So let me know. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the Memblaze 7A40. Signing out, and you can find me in the level one forest.